Well, Callum, I don't know what was worse, the nappy I've just changed on Rory or that second half performance from Aberdeen. Uh, I'm going to take a wild guess at the second half performance from Aberdeen. <laughs> well, marginally maybe. Um, I, don't, I really don't know where to begin. New manager, same problems. Yeah, he is just, uh, sorry to use this word, I know it's offensive against you. He's just a bald Derek McInnes. <laughs> Turns out, know, I, I, I do I do like any time you slate somebody with no hair, everyone thinks me and you have fallen out now. It's I just it's just a funny go to. It's like the most go to thing. I mean, sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. No offense taken. You know, I've accepted it. Uh, even I'm let, if I, even if I am letting it grow out slightly, but um, you know, pro- probably for us, the only positive is once again thanks to those of you that have recently subscribed to the channel on YouTube um, and continue to to follow us on Twitter at RTG underscore podcast. Um, we spoke in the preview episode with Ross about kind of Sheeran's comments, kind of using that blueprint that McInnes had in place. Although when we saw the team line up, there was one surprise. We spoke about him maybe integrating some youth and we saw young Jack McKenzie making his first Aberdeen start. Uh, yeah, I just thought that's a good thing. Um, blood in the youth ended up not being a good thing, but yeah, to be fair, he played okay other than um, trying to shield out the ball. And to be fair, I thought it maybe did go out. Um, but when he said he was going to use like a sort of McKinnis blueprint, I didn't think it was just going to be a carbon copy, <laughs> but actually worse a little bit. But, uh, who's surprised? Yeah. I know I did like the meme that Tonka put up um, on Twitter where it was, the, you know, the Scooby-Doo and they, they capture what was Paul Shearer and when you reveal the mask, it's Derek McInnes under it. Um, yeah, we decided to do this at full time, instant reaction, no notes taken down. So we'll give it our best shot. The internet connection in the country hasn't been great either. So it's <laughs> <been great. laughs> it's, I've been channeling my inter, inner tutor on a farm this morning, you see. Proper getting into the countryside. Funny you mention that because I know I give you stick about uh, I give the balls a lot of stick, but I got called a farmer because I was wearing a cap um, to cover up my hair because it was like in the wind, it was just going all all crazy. And then I got called, also got called homeless for my hair. <laughs> and then I got told today that I just looked sweaty. So <laughs> there we go. Oh, well, it's, it's going well. Yeah. Um. How, how did you feel though? First half. It, how do you feel that that went? Because opening 10, 15 minutes, we were attacking. Dean Campbell mm. clearly was after a birthday goal. He was shooting on sight at any opportunity. Yeah, we sort of looked okay. We played a bit more positively. I said to you when um, the ball got back for Dean Campbell, I was like, when was the last time we broke like that and uh, put a decent ball in the box? Unfortunately, that was the last time it actually happened in the game. But it started positively. I thought maybe we'll actually score a goal. Um, oh how wrong I was yeah I mean it wasn't it wasn't for the want of trying um, certainly at the start um, it was just it just ended up being one of those days and Dungeon United very rarely offered anything in the first half if, if not for Joe Lewis just doing his best to try and make things entertaining I don't know that man is just but at some stages his like passes out his balls out were actually pretty decent but sometimes he's just a bit, he just gives me, he scares me a little bit. But um, yeah, Dungeon United didn't offer much in the first half at all. Obviously, they got grew to the second half, I don't know what Mickey Mellon did at half time, but it was obviously more than what Paul Sheeran did. And um, But the fact that we only had one shot on target, even though we had a good spell throughout the sort of first 20 minutes, we had one shot on target throughout the whole game. So there you go. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's um, as as Fraser Walsh likes his grim stats. I'm sure that'll be another one to add to the add to the collection. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just uh, just I really I was really angered. Um, you know, as, as the as the game kind of developed and materialised, because you know when the team came out, it was like okay, there there's a there's sort of a young blend to it with with Jack McKenzie's appearance and. There was a lot of discussion around, are we going to go flat 4-4-2 four, four, or still sit with three at the back? Of, will McKenzie and McLennan be the wing backs? But it was 4-4-2 four, four, and, and Tommy Hoban played right back. How do you how do you feel he got on at right back? I mean, it's quite telling that Tommy Hoban is playing right back, a centre half. Meanwhile, Shalem Logan is on the golf course. Don't know where, but hopefully a nice afternoon. Bit windy it looks like Meldrum House. Wouldn't know. 
But a bit windy for it. And then the other right back we've got at the club, uh, so the senior right back, that is, is in America. So that's good. And then bringing on Calvin Ramsey, the only actual right back that we could have played today, it would seem, came on with two minutes to go. So that was a bit concerning. I did think a bit more positive, given that we had a uh, flat four. And Mackenzie did look quite comfortable on the left to start with, sort of coming out from the uh, back with the ball, a bit brave on it. Quite liked it. Um, unfortunately, things didn't go go to plan, though. Yeah, no, I, I, I know. I keep hoping that you know, wearing my Druids golf outfit, you know, might get a little sponsorship deal or some freebies out of this. But um, what did you make of the the tweet from Shay Logan and you know his Instagram? Are you, does it bother you at all that he's kind of tweeting whilst we're playing? And I don't think it, it doesn't bother me, but I think it could be a dig. The fact he's not involved and he's able to just—that's maybe what it is. Sort of showing like I'm not even. I'm not really playing at golf. Like it's not. I'm not even being involved at all. Anything like that. And it's. I don't. I don't blame him at all for doing it. Because it's probably. If you're going to go with a right back, then you should probably play a right back. And he's not been used much this season. But when he has, he's looked generally okay. But hmm. the only tweet, actually, it's... sorry, the tweet that bothers me. I don't think you've maybe seen it. Jack McInnes tweeted something today after a sort of gif, a Michael Scott gif. He went to your go-to uh, from yeah. laughing. <laughs> Which I think, it's sort of like a homeless man laughing at your shoes when it's his dad's mess that's been left and that's the reason. And his dad, two nil-nils against Dundee United, not much better. Well, I mean, that's points on the board. We didn't get any points on the board today. But the mess that he's left is now, that's the reason we've just lost because of the mess he's left. It's his team. It's his coaching staff. They're useless. The whole everything's useless. It's his fault. I'm raging. <laughs> Good to see there's some fire in the belly amongst the support. It would be nice to see that on the pitch. But no, I don't follow Jack McInnes because he's a petulant child. And I feel that Shay Logan was acting like a petulant child by doing that sort of social media posts. Whether or not it's a sly dig or not, that sort of stuff doesn't help, especially when we then go and put in a performance and a result like what we've now got because it will it will raise questions you know uh, ben palmer journalist i think he's um, for the guardian you know he tweeted saying playing playing a center back at right back whilst your club's current two right backs are on the golf course or in atlanta you know the fact that journalists are picking that up as well you're giving you, you look at what dave cormack said in his um his little youtube interview through the week he's biting his tongue in terms of biting back at the West Coast media for certain comments around getting rid of McInnes. Shea Logan's just gone and given the West Coast media a story there. At the same time, if he's been frozen out and they're comp- comp- continuing to play frauds like Johnny Hayes and Niall McGinn, then I don't blame him for being pissed off. And just It just creates, you know, unnecessary bad press around the team for me. It's just... One of those things, but everyone's going to have it. No, it can't. Um, but you're you're calling McGinn and Hayes frauds. What about Conor McLennan's performance today? Uh, yeah, it wasn't great. I would usually defend that man to the hill. Uh, I don't think the pitch helped anyone, but a couple of times I was like, "Oh, it's the pitch's fault." Uh, no, it wasn't great from Conor McLennan, but out with probably Dean Campbell, Ash Taylor, and maybe McKenzie for the first half, who did play well. Hmm. McCrory anonymous yeah. Ferguson anonymous other than the penalty shout which could have possibly been a penalty two hands on the back definitely not a booking for simulation but then yeah. that referee was absolutely useless because there was also a handball for Dean Campbell that he just waved away as well that would have been so harsh that handball though. harsh like, but if... then but at the same time given all the other ones he's missed every everything else all the other horrible decisions it just adds up to the whole thing are you meaning in the second half yeah it was a handball half. yeah that's not a penalty either but you've seen the, them given the... The first half in, I suppose, well, I was screaming for a penalty when Flo Camberry did something similar. We'd, have been, we'd have been wanting one if that was Mark Reynolds doing it or something. So Yeah, but I mean, for me, the going back to the original point about Conor McLennan, I like Joe Sullivan's tweet today about saying that Conor McLennan would struggle to control a bag of cement. I mean, we've spoken about this previously, and I think it was picked up on Red TV that 
it's almost like his feet and his brain aren't in communication. Sometimes, yeah. They're, he just gets somewhere and then a touch lets him down or he doesn't look up or it's the wrong ball. It's just, there's always something wrong. It's just, I, does he need a run of games? Or, yeah, it's hard when you just get thrown in every now and then, to be fair. Yeah, and but in a team that's only scored one goal in 10 games, players that aren't pulling their weight are constantly doing the same I mean you could list the whole team at this rate come on now let's no, be fair I, I'm not, no I'm not I'm not singling him out in saying that it just wasn't him pulling his weight but when players cross the crosses from him or Hayes or McGinn you look at the the corner in the 92nd minute I mean that is an utter joke that's up there with a the set piece at Celtic Park I mean if you want to sum up our season our day our attempt at scoring goals recently play that McGinn corner on loop. But that one's in the Northern Ireland squad as well. <laughs> So's Matt Kennedy and he can't even get a game. That hobbit. But no, and um, on the Ferguson incident, it's not a penalty. I've seen them given. Mm-hmm. And my first instinct was it could have been, but that's not, that's not a booking. That is just a ridiculous decision. I don't know who they found this man like on the streets of Dundee. Craig Aitken, never heard of him. Don't know what he's doing. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, he's probably one of the poorer refs, but then are there any good refs anymore? No. Um, on to the, the second half. You you know, you know said earlier in that episode that Mickey Mellon probably got the Dungeon United squad fired up and they came out and looked a better side. But for me, they, they didn't really... Th- Apart from one chance where I think Shandlin was caught on his heels at nil nil, for me they didn't really threaten or cause us trouble. It was only our own doing that was inviting yeah. pressure on. They did have two shots list. on target though, so one one more than us, uh, twice as much I'm, of us actually. So I'm really go. impressed that you've paid attention to the stats because I, I definitely didn't. Actually, I don't even know who scored for Dundee United. That's how much exactly. I was paying Spoiler. On the 61st minute. But yeah, to be fair, no, I don't think they came out and created much, but they just looked a bit more up for it than they did in the first half. It was a bit less panicky kind of thing. They had a bit more uh, like fluidity to their play, I guess. Was it just a bit more hunger? Player? Yeah. Even though they didn't create much, but a little bit more about them. But they, yeah, they looked like they, they looked up for the game, even though for them, they had nothing to play for. Their bottom six places secured. They're not going to get relegated. Um, probably definitely not now that they picked up the three points. It's just it is one of those things. And that's probably, for me, a disappointment because we were encouraging, I think it's fair to say, I don't know if you agree on that in the, in the first half compared to recent weeks, but we just didn't build on it at all in that second half. No, I don't know what went on at halftime. Paul Shearer out, Ross Nichols sin. <laughs> so um, yeah, well, but, and if he doesn't get the Aberdeen job, there's many of you that want him back in on the podcast. That's for sure. Yeah, true. It seems to go down very well, so I'm glad about that. But yeah, it was just we. I don't know what happened, and it's the same when McKenzie was in charge. What do they say at half time? Like, how do they come out even worse most of the time? Mm. What What goes on in there? Yeah, and you know, an interesting comment from Ryan Hedges on Red TV about you know the intensity, and also just on Ryan Hedges, what an accent for a Welshman. Very English, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, he spoke about the intensity in training being raised this week. If that's the intensity that's being raised, what the hell have they been doing previously? And can we raise it again so that we actually do something decent on the pitch when we return from the international break? Yeah, why did it take so long to raise intensity? But also, another thing, like we were saying, it's sort of the Sheeran was going from the McInnes textbook. First of all, the substitutes as well leave it very well, late yeah we'll come to that chaos but like um, even before then in the pre-match interview I didn't actually listen to it but I heard a lot of people saying he didn't seem very confident or anything about it he seemed a bit downbeat what yeah. is that about? yeah and that and that for you know I, I again I didn't listen to it but I listened to his 10 minute interview um, I think it was on Monday that Red TV released it and he didn't or it was maybe the back end of last week and he didn't seem a man that was excited about being in the dugout. And I just couldn't wrap my head around that. It was, if I'm in charge on sa- on Saturday at Tanadice, you know, we'll be doing what what the gaffer's done. We'll 
the gaffer this, the gaffer that, you know, there's been a blueprint in place. We'll, we'll maybe tweak a few things here and there. You're in charge of the football club that you've been in and around for seven to eight years. You've played for, you know what the fans want. Do you not want the job? Yeah, we'll have to get go. Tosha to have a word, I think. Abs- Actually, that's a really good shot. I might go and email him after this and say, Probably. get him fired up. Actually, I might see if he wants to just come up and do his, yeah. do a wee stint on the sidelines because he won't settle for second yeah. best like that. Sort your mate it's, peanut out. Just yeah, terrible. exactly. But that's that's also another thing. Okay, he's been around the club for so long, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But that also maybe explains why he's the way he is. Because he's a little but, side little apprentice for uh, McInnes and it's just the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. But then you've got Barry Robson. A, you know, he's got a winning mentality from kind of his club, club career. Surely he's not happy to sit and accept mediocrity as well. Or, you know, as being associated with Derek McInnes for so long, just ingrained mediocrity into the brains of players and staff alike. Yeah, this is going to shock you, but you're the average of those you surround yourself with. So, all right, Dalai think Lama, about it. Whoever that's exactly. from. <laughs> no, but think about it. It, may, it would make sense that they've all just fallen into the same pit. Yeah. And uh, do you feel on the back of today's performance, let's say, let's not base it on the result? Do you, does that make you I don't know what the right wording of this is more worried or more determined that we need a manager in before the end of the season um, yes but it would need to be the right man but at the same time they've only got five games to turn it round they'd have to get used to the players by then even if they did get the right man there's no guarantee that they would be able to turn it round so it's probably better to wait I guess, until summer and then make sure it's 100% the right guy rather than rushing in, it going terribly wrong. We probably won't finish third even if we do go and get by like Chris Coleman or something like that. It's not going to be Danny Cowley now, is it? So No, yeah. Cheers, Dave. Not, not one we rolled our hopes up on. Um, it's just uh, it's so frustrating, but to sum up our, our performance, you know, we said Dungeon United kind of looked more up for it their goal summed up. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it maybe had gone out, but that, that sort of tells you the determination from Fuchs to get there before McKenzie. He covered a there. lot of ground yeah. to get there. And at some speed. But yeah, um, yeah it sort of sums up maybe uh, that's from McKenzie's inexperience. I suppose you'll learn from it and things. But even then, the defending from afterwards onwards by the rest of them, not great. Um, frustrating, very frustrating. Yeah, I think it's a bit of an experience and, you know, I don't think that should deter from what that aside was a very assured performance from young Jack McKenzie. And it's good to see another Youth Academy product come in and because, you know, players are going to make mistakes. You know, people have been critical of Ash Taylor throughout the season. People are critical of Andy Constein for the fact that he's still playing. You know, folk are going to find scapegoats. I'm not making Jack McKenzie a scapegoat at all today but it just happened to be him that him mm. that made the mistake and I kind of looked at the incident and thought your Tommy Hoban your Ash Taylors in that situation get around the ball yeah I don't really like, know what he was doing he, he kind of left the door open for Fuchs to win the ball mm-hmm. but I also thought Ash Taylor would have probably leathered that ball into Rosette mm. like not taking any chances. Similarly, at the other end of the pitch, Mark Reynolds, that was something he was never afraid to do, just get the ball out of play. But it's a fair point you make as well. Once that ball's kept in, they've got to try and defend it better and it, it just wasn't done there either. But it was a catalogue of errors. Yeah, you mentioned Taylor though. He had a good game, um, I thought, today. Birkenhead, Brazy, maybe another one of the very, very few positives from today. But I think Mackenzie will um, probably learn from that. We're not making him a scapegoat. The fact of the matter, it was his mistake, but he's yeah. a young lad. 20 years old, not played a lot of first-team football. You've also got to remember as well, he's been on loan at Forfar and, and how long for, had Forfar not been season. playing for? Yeah. So, you know, he's only had, I think they had a bounce game against Ross County the Monday that McInnes was sacked. 
um, that he probably got minutes in. And I don't. I think they played a bounce game last weekend um, to try and get more minutes into the players. So you know he's not exactly had competitive action for many months, but. It was a bold decision from Sheeran to, to play him, but you know, just one lapse of concentration, one lapse of inexperience. But mm. hey, look, if Derek McInnes was still in charge, I doubt Jack McInnes would even uh, Jack McKenzie, sorry, would have even played today. Probably got more chance of Jack McInnes getting a game than Jack <laughs> McKenzie. Yeah, probably. Um but you know, we've now got an international um break to look forward to. Um if you can use that word. I, I, to be honest, I am delighted to be looking forward to a game I'm probably going to enjoy mm. compared to watching Aberdeen just now. Yeah, I suppose Shea Adams is something. But um, yeah. are we going to? I'm going to talk. Can we talk about the substitutes first. Can we do that? Oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I forgot. What the I... hell was that? <laughs> just what the hell? It's the exact same. It gets as soon as we go one 0 down, make the changes. What are you waiting for, bald man? Yeah, well. <laughs> I feel like you're having a go at me there, but I know you're not. Um, but he, he, you know, he brought McGinn came on before those three changes in the 85th minute anyway. So mm. it, w- it was a, a one roll of the dice, but that's like for like. Hey, Camberry, though, for you, did he do anything to merit like no nope. staying on the pitch for that long? As soon as we did went, you, as as soon as we went one 0 down, it should have been Camberry and one of the centre mids off. Henry and Hornby on. There's no point bringing on McGinn. He's just the exact same as Conor McLennan. Can't, couldn't cross a road. What's the point of that? But then, if, so if you're saying then you don't bring on McGinn because he's the same as McLennan, you say you wouldn't bring on Ethan Ross either then? I know he didn't even feature, but... I'd bring, on, you... bring on him because I don't put him in the same category as those two useless twats yet. <laughs> so I'd maybe bring on Ethan Ross. But yeah, another, just, thing, uh, just... another thing, sorry, is... The Calvin Ramsey one. That is straight out of the Mark McGee handbook that we got told by uh, Jack Grimmer. Bring on the youngster, deflect. Yeah, that is. And, you know, it is it is. It's nice to see these young players getting minutes. But what's the point? Them what's the point? Yeah. What's he going to do for the 90, 90 seconds that he was on the pitch? It, And I think, given the run of form we're on, we're still at an important point in the season. Hibbs and Livingston obviously drew today. Uh, you know, however you want to look at that result, look at it whatever way you want. But it, it's it's just it does it just it's a bit of a mockery of a substitution. Mm-hmm. But well done to Calvin for getting on the pitch. Yeah, but it's at the same point. You can do that. Just bloody start the lad instead of playing Tommy Holman at right back. What's the point? Give him a chance. Yeah, you can go Ramsey at right back, McKenzie at left back, and go for Holman and Taylor in the middle. Uh, uh, I don't <laughs> the know. Considine fans, I can feel the hate. To I can, I, 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 much I love Andy Considine, that probably would be because you can't normally. We'd probably say Taylor, but given his performance today, he deserves to say. But ah, oh, okay, we're fed up, right? Let's just talk about something nice, Scotland, whatever. Yeah, Scotland. Yeah, Scotland get their World Cup qualifier campaign underway on Thursday, so we are blessed with two weeks of no more action of Aberdeen um, well actually we don't even know who we're playing next because we've got the mm. split fixtures um, to come and St Johnston snuck in thanks to an 89th minute goal from Hamilton so the top six features Celtic Rangers ourselves Hibs Livingston and St Johnston so some cracking fixtures I'm sure to look forward mm. to Callum um, yeah can't wait to pick up a total of four points or something like that are we maybe. really going to uh, wow yeah. I, I was going to say are you really going to put a points prediction on that after what we did with the last two games and- to be honest actually I think four is probably a stretch because we won't beat Rangers we won't beat Celtic obviously we'll probably shit the bed against Hibs and then Livingston and St Johnston not easy games either so it's all mm. fucked isn't it we're in danger of finishing outside the top four if we're not careful be a good laugh Bet for cup stages, maybe that would be nice. Oh yeah, a little pre-season tour of the northeast, exactly. a little local derby against Cove Rangers. Exactly, put those little schmucks in their place. Yeah. Well, we'll be back. We might do a wee Scotland preview because I know there's a lot of you that tune in that are Scotland fans as well. Actually, no, we won't do a preview. We'll do a review. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll review the Austria and Israel games because we don't play Israel enough, and 
It's not like you need to hear about Scotland playing Israel. Yeah. And maybe have a wee look ahead to the Faroe Islands game, depending how the opening two games have gone. And also include some Aberdeen content in that episode as well, if we've heard on the post-split fixtures, to kind of have a wee look ahead to maybe a brief prediction on how that's going to have gone or mm-hmm. going to go. Is there anything else you want to touch on before we go? Or am I a good to go the outro? I don't know. I feel like I I feel like your mate, meaning I should have said something. No, 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 totally no, not at, all, not at all. I was just making sure there's nothing else you want to cover. I don't think so. Okay, nothing else you want to cover. Okay. Um thanks very much for tuning in. Sorry, it's been a bit of a shambles, everybody. Um <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe the video. Uh, so you uh, so you don't miss out in future. Follow us wherever you're listening in and at RTG underscore podcast. Um what are you doing with your rest of your evening, Glenn? Oh, I'm going to be just watching TV. Watching TV? Okay, well, I'm about to listen to Tom Grennan's new album, <laughs> number one. I'm going to listen to that on vinyl, my first vinyl, and start the vinyl collection, and then I'm going to watch Newcastle make my weekend even more miserable. Thanks for well, tuning I'm, in. 